Hey, welcome back guys, JC here, and this is part two of how not to fry parts. Parts of how to fry part. My OCD is kicking in. Part two of how not to fry things. How not to waste money. There's a few reasons why I'm making this video. Um, the main reason is because since I made part one, we've doubled the number of subscribers. And I feel like a lot of guys haven't seen that video because I'm still getting a lot of questions on stuff that I covered in that video. So if you haven't watched it yet, look in the description below. I'll have a link to it. I highly recommend watching that video because not only is there just awesome and just loads of information in there, I cover all the main reasons why you do something that fries apart. The other reason is because you may want to watch that first before watching this one because in this one we're going further in depth. Now if you do happen to fry apart, hopefully you won't after watching the first video or this one, but if you by chance do fry anything, I also have a repairs series of videos. So look in the description below and I'll leave you a link to my repairs playlist. Now I've got a question for you guys. How many of you just watched my uh, meticulous Alt 210 build? Okay, got the ESCs wired up. And at the end of that video I said, now before you plug in a LiPo battery, you always, always, always want to take a multimeter, place it on both ends of your XT60 connector, and if you get a beep right now, then you have a short somewhere. So I always, always check the XT60 connector for continuity before I plug in a LiPo battery. And doing that saved one of my ESCs and possibly even more than that, it could have fried my flight controller as well. So let's rewind for a second. How many of you noticed that my ESC number one power and ground wires were flip-flopped? I had power on ground and ground on power. Now, of course, at the end of the video, when I told you to check for continuity on the XC60, I already did that off camera and I had already fixed those wires. That's why you didn't see my multimeter beeping because I had already fixed the problem and I didn't fry anything. Like I said in the how not to fry things part one video, it's been a very, very long time since I've fried anything. I can't remember the last time. Oh, but how do I have this complete repair series of videos? <laughs> you guys can thank my good friend Ray Steele for that one. All the parts that are fried in those videos are parts that he has fried. He's been in this hobby for a very long time. He's a really good pilot. He's my go-to guy for 3D printing, but Jesus Christ, he can fry everything. As a matter of fact, I had him on the phone. He bought one of these Omnibus F4 fly controllers that everyone else fries, and I want to show you why in this video, but I had him on the phone and I talked him through wiring this complete, everything on this, including the power and ground, and he still fried it with me, Project Blue Falcon, on the phone with him. How do you screw that up? But he did, and it does happen because I mean, I'm not blaming you guys, it is a little confusing. But we're going we're gonna to cover this in a lot more in this video. So yeah, long story short, coming up next, you guys will have a video on how to replace a processor on your flight controller. Courtesy of Mr. Ray Steele, once again. So since we're talking about testing the XC60 connector before you plug in a LiPo battery, let's talk about why that doesn't always work. And there's more that you have to check than just that. Well, actually, before we do that, let me explain to you how this works. That will give you a better understanding of why we do what we do. So I've got my multimeter set to the continuity mode. If these leads touch, it beeps because continuity, which this basically means that electricity can flow through whatever I am connecting these to. So because of touching each other, electricity can flow through that. That's why when you put these on the end of an XT60, if you have some of your wires crisscrossed, then electricity is flowing through one of these leads and coming into the other lead. Just like if we, let's just say we put this on a ground pin on a flight controller and we place this on another ground pin. So electricity can flow between these two pins. If we do that with a 5 volt pin and another 5 volt pin, electricity can flow through those two pins. And how this multimeter is working is it's actually sending out voltage, a small amount of voltage and current through one lead. And if this lead picks it up, then that's how it knows. So if we take a LED bulb 
that doesn't take much current at all. And we place one lead on one end of the LED and one lead on the other, it lights up. So that just goes to prove that this is actually sending out a very small amount of current. And this lead is picking it up and that's how you know electricity can flow. This also means that because this is sending out voltage and current, you do not want to ever test for continuity on something that is being powered. So you want to unplug your battery and any other power source before running these tests. If you have a flight controller even plugged in with a USB cable, then you, d you don't want to do this test. Have no power on whatever you were testing. Okay, now, why doesn't this always work by placing one lead on one end of the XC60 and the other lead on the other? And I'm not getting any beeps, meaning that theoretically I don't have any shorts and electricity isn't going to flow where it's not supposed to and fry anything. But that is only going to test anything. This is hard to explain. I'm going to flash a picture on your screen of a FreeSky XSR receiver. Now I will show you a picture of a XSR with the main power and ground circuits. Now there's more you know, power and ground circuits flowing all through this thing. I mean, the whole thing is nothing but power and ground circuits. But this receiver, as well as most other receivers, I'd say 90% of receivers, you power with 5 volts. But the receiver isn't actually operating off of 5 volts. It's actually operating off of 3.3 volts. This main power circuit is flowing through the pin, and you're providing 5 volts to the receiver, either from... Well, if they're all powered from your flight controller, but some flight controllers are powered differently. Some flight controllers you have to power with a 5 volt regulator coming from a PDB. Some flight controllers have the regulator built in to the flight controller. And you would just power those flight controllers with the full voltage of the battery. Or the other way around, you would power your PDB with the full voltage of the battery. Either way, the full voltage of the battery is being set down to 5 volts. But these receivers don't actually operate off of, off of 5 volts. You give it 5 volts, but there is a 3.3 volt regulator built into the receiver. If you look on the back of most FreeSky receivers and you know other brands as well, there is a STM F1 processor that you know is on the receiver. You know, just like the NACE32 flight controllers, the same F1 processor. These processors are being powered with 3.3 volts from the receiver's built-in 3.3 volt voltage regulator. So that's why, if you watch my repair series of videos, uh, I show you how to bypass this regulator if you ever fry that regulator. That is why I, you know, I show you how you can power it with 3.3 volts coming directly from the flight controller. So that way you're bypassing it and your receiver is good to go. Now getting back on point, when you run this continuity test on the XC60 connector, you know, it's attempting to test everything, but what's going to happen is that current is going to flow through your uh, the XC60 and the PDB and then go from the PDB to your flight controller and then your receiver is being powered off the flight controller so it's going to keep going until it gets to that 3.3 volt voltage regulator and then that's where it stops. It can't make it past that regulator. So that regulator is is basically a dead end for that current to flow that's coming from your multimeter. And because that's a dead end if you wire the power and ground wrong, you know, coming from your flight controller, say you have the ground wire on a power pin, a 5 volt pin on your flight controller, and then you have the, uh, you know, the other wire the other way around, either way it's a dead end. So that circuit is not complete. Therefore, your multimeter will not catch that mistake. And that is the long story of why testing the XC60 works on some things. Where and it's working on these circuits that do not have dead ends, where the circuit for your receiver does have a dead end, and it's not going to let you know if you have those wires on wrong. And wrapping up this topic before we move on to the next topic, just to prove it to you, before shooting this video, I'm getting no beeps, right? Just before this video, I actually took my top plate off and I flip flopped the wires. I have power on ground and ground on power. We're not getting that beep. So, 
that's just proof that that will not work in some situations. Now moving on to the next topic. Let's say you did correctly wire, let's just stay on the topic of receivers. And this applies to everything else, but uh, let's say you, you tell me you um, wired the receiver correctly, you do have power on power and ground on ground, but it's still fried. Or not even the receiver. Let's say you know you're not getting any lights from your receiver. That's that's a common one I get. I'm not getting any lights. Well, that means you're not getting any power, assuming you do have it wired correctly. Well, let's back up for a second. The first thing I need to explain. Uh, like I said, some flight controllers have built-in voltage regulators, just like this uh, seriously Dodo. It's got one right here. Also have other flight controllers like um, you know the Omnibus flight controllers. I'm just going to pull all these out real quick. So the Omnibus flight controller has a voltage regulator. The Seriously Pro Racing Mini right here. And there's a few others that have these voltage regulators. Where some flight controllers, let's just take this X-Racer F303 for this example, does not have one. For those of you that use these types of flight controllers, you have to power these with 5 volts. Because one common problem that I'm seeing is uh, you just look at the wiring diagram and it says, well, this is a power pin and this is a ground pin, so I'm just going to run power from my PDB because that's what everyone's telling me to do. I got to run power from my PDB to one of these power pins, and then I run a ground from the PDB to the, one of these ground pins. And then you tell me that your flight controller is getting power and you're getting the LED lights, but your receiver is not. You can power these flight controllers with the full voltage of the battery and it will power itself because, like I said, uh, the, it doesn't matter if it's an STM F1, F3, F4 processor, these boards have a 3.3 volt voltage regulator on all of them. Somewhere on the board there's a regulator and that regulator is taking the full voltage of the battery, stepping it down to 3.3 volts and that is what is powering the processor and then the processor is you know sending what it has to send to make your LEDs like your status LED blink so you will get your LEDs blinking and some of them will just stay solid and it's gonna you know seem like it's fine and it is fine but if you have the full voltage of the battery going on one pin on one power pin then it's going to be the full voltage on all the power pins and even though it says 5 volts on you know somewhere on the board that's just that's telling you to put 5 volts on that pin. It doesn't mean that 5 volts is coming out of that pin unless you have 5 volts on it. So if your receiver is wired into this, even though some of these voltage regulators can handle the full voltage of the battery and give the processor the 3.3 volts that it needs, this doesn't mean that your receiver regulator can handle the full voltage of the battery because that's what's being sent to it. And that is usually what fries your receiver, assuming you had the wiring correct with power on power and ground on ground because you know if those wires are flip-flopped it's going to fry if you send the full voltage of the battery to the receiver it's going to fry so that's just two different ways of frying a receiver and like i said i'm just using receivers for this example but this applies to everything doesn't matter if it's your led lights doesn't matter if it's your buzzer well actually buzzers you can use backwards but that's besides the point so ending this topic to wrap it up sum it up Make sure you have the correct voltage going everywhere where you need it to be. The correct voltage to the flight controller, correct voltage to your receiver, correct voltage to your video transmitters, cameras, I mean everything. Because I've seen some guys take a video transmitter and wire it into, you know, they, they will send the full voltage of the battery to the, the video transmitter. Some transmitters can handle that. Some are rated for, you know, I'd say most commonly 20 volts and some can go up to you know 32 36 volts but some of them can only be powered with 12 volts and it's just like cameras almost all cameras can operate on 5 volts but most of them have a range will be 5 volts to 10 volts 5 volts to 16 volts or 5 to 20 5 to 30 but some cameras can only be powered with 5 volts so no matter what parts you're using camera and video transmitter Find out what your voltage range is and make sure you are within that range. Okay, now let's talk about overloading voltage regulators, which is another thing that is... With the Omnibus flight controllers, I swear to God, so many people fry those things. 
You know what, before we even move on to that subject, let's quickly touch this subject. I'm going to flash a picture on your screen because I know it's really hard for you guys to see, but this is how my buddy Ray fried this Omnibus, and this is how most guys fry their Omnibuses as well. They can't find a wiring diagram. Some places where you order these things, they don't give you a wiring diagram, and there are wiring diagrams online, but some people are, you know, I'm not going to say lazy, but they don't look for it. So they just go by what's written on the back side of the board. Now I'm going to circle the VBAT pin for you, or at least where it's it says VBAT. So you see where it says VBAT? Now tell me, is this referring to the pin above it or the pin below it? Most guys assume that this VBAT is, a, is referring to the pin below it, but that's incorrect because if you look at the very top pin, there's nothing written above it but it has 5 volts written below it. Therefore, the text, what's written on the back side of the board, is referring to the pin above it. So, if you wire your the, the full voltage of the battery coming from your PDB to the pin below VBAT, that is actually your current pin. And once you plug in the battery with the full voltage going to your current pin, which is a signal pin, not a power pin, that will fry your processor. And that's why I'm going to be replacing the processor on this fly controller coming up next, because that's exactly what my friend Ray did. So just to add in to what we've covered so far, which is uh, don't always trust the XC60 continuity test and check everything by eye. Also, make sure you have the correct amount of voltage going everywhere. But here, this is a fine example of make sure the voltage not only is it the correct amount, but it is going to the correct pin because sometimes, in this case, the text on the back of this board can be misleading. Okay, now we can go into overloading voltage regulators because that is yet another problem that is very common with these Omnibus fly controllers. Not just these, but you know any other fly controller. This fly controller has a built-in 1.5 amp voltage regulator. Uh, on some websites it says 3 amps, but I am I am almost positive that it is not 3 amps because you could even take this part number on the voltage regulator, look up a da data sheet, and it's going to say 1.5 amps. So I guess that's a mini lesson right there. Don't always trust what websites say. Look up part numbers for yourself and find the data sheets. So here I have a little example that I wrote down on a piece of paper. Just crunching numbers to just give you guys a good idea of what I'm talking about. So this applies to both types of fly controllers, whether, you, whether it has a built-in voltage regulator or if you have a PDB with a voltage regulator and you're using that regulator to power the fly controller, which is powering everything connected to the fly controller, either way, it's going to be the same outcome. All the power is coming from one regulator. So you want to add up how much current all of these devices are drawing from this regulator, and you want to find out what at what your regulator is rated for because uh, you know just for example some of the older the original dodo fly controllers had a 0.5 amp regulator which is 500 milliamps but the newer versions of the dodos they started putting 1 amp regulators on them or 1000 milliamps and on some PDBs the regulator is rated for 1 amp some of them are rated for half an amp some are 1.5 amps it all depends so you have to find the specs for the part you were using but in this example, let's just say our receiver draws 100 milliamps. And how do I know this? Well, uh, just you just have to search online. Um, I, I use readymaderc.com because not only do they have a bunch of other specifications for their parts, but they also include uh, how much power is being, being drawn. So that's where a lot of these numbers come from. And you can also measure it for yourself if you know how to measure current. If you don't know how to measure current, then don't even try it because you can fry something if you do it wrong. I might even do a separate video on how to measure current. So the receiver is drawing 100 milliamps. Then let's say we have some LED lights and they use 190 milliamps each. And let's just say we use two of them, so that's going to be 380 milliamps. Then uh, I, I do not, I am including this into this example just to tell you don't do it. Do not power your camera or video transmitter off of your fly controller. You can power them off of a regulator 
on a PDB because they're usually rated at much higher. Um, and that is what the Omnibus flight controllers were attempting to do by putting this 1.5 amp voltage regulator on it. But don't just don't do it. I'm not going to go into that. But so we got 100 milliamps, then 380 milliamps. Let's just say we put a camera on it, drawing 100 100 milliamps. This is off of a 5 volt regulator, so. I was going to add in the video transmitter, but most can't even be powered off of 5 volts, so that's why I crossed it out, so we ignore that. And then let's say we have a buzzer at 30 milliamps. So the receiver, two LEDs, and buzzer is going to draw 510 milliamps, which is going to be one half of an amp. If your voltage regulator is rated for 5 amps, then you should be fine because usually they're a little lenient on their on the way they test it you can go a little bit higher than what it's rated for so 510 that will be fine we're good if you have a 1 amp voltage regulator then you're definitely definitely good because you're only using one half of its potential but say we add in a, a camera we're up to 610 milliamps and then what if we're running four LEDs that's going to add 380 more so our total is now up to 990 so if you have a one half of an amp voltage regulator, you will fry it. If your regulator is rated for one amp, you're good because 990, I mean that's 0.99 of an amp. Now this is where a lot of confusion comes in, especially with the omnibus flight controllers, because guys are like, "Oh, well, it's rated for one and a half amps, and I'm not even, you know, I'm drawing one amp." There's more things that goes into it, like. Uh, voltage spikes and not just voltage spikes but other things that is going to make your video look like complete crap so and that, I'm not going into that right now that's a completely separate video in its own but I don't recommend powering all the stuff off of the omnibus because your video is going to look like crap even though the current being drawn is lower than that but factoring this stuff in going back to where I said if you ha if you're drawing 510 milliamps off of a regulator that's rated at 500 milliamps that's you can go a little bit higher it all depends on the amount of heat because if the regulator gets too hot then it's going to fry itself I mean that's how it fries the regulator on the Omnibus fly controllers are it's a different layout different type of voltage regulator the back side of this is one giant heat sink this one isn't so bad but the F3 Omnibus fly controllers and I think even the F4 Pro this regulator is right in the middle also, right in the middle is your processor. So this heat sink, this is create, creating a lot of heat, especially the more current being drawn from it. With all this heat coming from this voltage regulator and the processor right on the other side, this damages your processor. And that's how guys, that's just one more reason of how guys are frying their Omnibus fly controllers. That's why I say, do not, do not, do not power your camera and video transmitter off of this fly controller because you're creating so much heat and then something that I just want to say about all parts not just the omnibus it is really bad about the omnibus but all parts I've seen so many guys fry so many things and then blame it on the part take a guess at how many bad parts I have purchased like just it was just bad right out the box and trust me I buy a lot of stuff I spend probably ten thousand dollars a year on this hobby and in my lifetime, how many bad parts have I received that was just bad right out the box? Four. It's happened to me four times. And two of those times were NACE 32 uh, fly controllers way back in the day. Those things suck. I hate them so much. Four times. So when someone tells me that, um, JC, you recommended me these ESCs, and three of them fried as soon as I plugged in my LiPo battery. These things are junk. They're crap because three out of my four ESCs fried. I'm like, well, did you do everything right? Yeah, I wired everything right. What am I, a dummy? I don't say this to you viewers, but what I'm thinking in my head is, well, it's kind of weird how I'm using that same part. I have 20 of that same ESCs, not one is fried. Not only that, but in my entire time in this hobby, I have only purchased four bad parts right out the box out of thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. So I find it really hard to believe that three of your four ESCs were bad right out the box. And it doesn't just go for ESCs, it goes for receivers, for video transmitters, cameras. There's so many things that can go wrong and that you can do wrong. It's not just 
place, making sure your wires are on the correct pins. It's also making sure you are not drawing too much current. It's making sure you have the correct amount of voltage going to the part. It's also making sure that you have your temperatures in mind and your temperatures aren't getting too hot. There's so much that goes into it. And I, I you know, I, I tell these guys, you know, they swear to up and down it's a bad part right out the box and they they are just absolutely sure they did everything right, but I just find it so hard to believe that I mean, I, I yeah, I fried stuff in, back in my day. When I was brand new, I fried more things than anybody. I was the master of disaster, but, you know, I, 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 and that's how I learned. You, you live and learn. And back then, I used to think that the parts were bad right out of the box, and that's before I knew any of this. I, I swore I was, I was just like these viewers telling me the same thing. I was them at some point, swearing up and down that it was a bad part right out of the box. Just like these Omnibus flag controllers, just like you know certain ESCs that I recommend, certain video transmitters, cameras. These guys swear it's a bad part right out the box. They say that um, you know these are a lot of these are you know just this is a junk board and all that. But I, I find it funny how you know, I'm just using the Omnibus for this example. But I have eight of these things, and all eight are per working perfectly. Except for one of them that's in the bottom of a pond right now, but that's besides the point. So that's going to wrap it up for this video, guys. I know it's really long, sorry. I, I did a bunch of ranting and all that, but I just wanted to make sure you fully understand that a lot more goes into this instead of, it's not just making sure you have positive on positive and ground on ground. There's a lot more that goes into this. So thanks for watching, guys, and I will see you again soon.